So let's talk about electromagnetic induction. Now this is actually one of the most important discoveries of the 19th century that has to do with electricity and magnetism. It actually follows from the kirchhoff faraday lenz law, but the ideas that we kind of brought out of this led to the modern power grid and power transmission. So let's see how this works. Electromagnetic induction is associated with the property that if you change one current, you can induce changes in another current. So let's see how this works. All right, we got a current in a long wire that's like that. It's going to the right and it's going to increase. So let's see what that increase in current means as far as the Faraday Lenz law is concerned. All right. Well, this current, since it's going this direction, is associated with the magnetic field that's going into the page inside this second circuit loop. All right, this current is increasing. That means that the value of this magnetic field is increasing. That means that the magnetic flux through this loop is increasing into the board. Now, Faraday lengths. Systems don't like change. It wants it to remain the same. So the increase of the magnetic field into the board generates a current in this loop such that the magnetic field generated by this current points out of the board to try to cancel that increase in magnetic flux. All right, so how does the current have to go to generate a magnetic field that's come in out of the board. Well, right hand rule, magnetic field comes out, fingers show the direction of the induced current. So when we've got this long wire like that, we increase the current, we generate a current down here. Now the beautiful, beautiful thing about this property of electromagnetic induction is that it allows us to transmit current with no physical contact at all. There was no physical contact between the top wire and the bottom current loop. But despite that fact, we use the magnetic field in compliance with the Faraday Lenz law to transmit current down into the other loop. Now, one important thing about this that made Edison very unhappy was that it requires changing current. You cannot do this with just a standard DC current because what would you have to do? Now you just have to increase the current and just keep on increasing it. I mean, that's not sustainable. So what people do instead is they use something called alternating current. So here's the idea. When this current is increasing to the right, the generated current will be counterclockwise. When this current is decreasing, the generated current down here will be clockwise. So if we look over at a graph, and this is an alternating current, notice it looks like a cosine function because that's what they look like, cosine function. What we need is we need to write down when this current is decreasing, this current should be negative. When this current is increasing, this current should be positive. With Brightstorm, I never get bored learning because all the teachers have really creative ways of teaching. As a Brightstorm member, I never felt alone when I studied. I knew that if I needed help with my homework or studying for my next big test, I could always log on to Brightstorm and find a video with a teacher who would explain it to me. I never thought I could get such good grades in school, but with Brightstorm, it's easy. Seriously, I don't know how I survived in school before Brightstorm. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> Work it, work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, to fix. Yeah. <laughs>